On a more pervasive level, how do we get people to truly embrace diversity? To be totally race blind, mm. for example, you want to hire a model for a job, mm. doesn't matter whether the person looks Malay, Indian, Chinese or whatever. I think we need to create more opportunities, opportunities for people to understand to each other, to yeah. be represented. If we feel that something is not right, we have to speak up. To well, say my, that, look, my, I don't think yeah. that this is the right thing to do. We should ask questions. If you have a company that employs 1,000 people and there's only one particular ethnic group, you got to ask yourself, yeah. Yeah. are they looking hard enough but, for my, people from other communities? We all should bear the responsibility because we will all go through the negative experiences. So if our society is actually going to be very, very negative, the one who suffers is not somebody else, it's you and your family as well. Once we begin to acknowledge and realise the importance of the negative things that can happen, you will actually want to take on the responsibility. But, but David, I, I don't think that as a majority, you suffer the same as a minority. There are certain Definitely. societal pressures that affect a minority. I'll give you a, a personal anecdote. I was on set filming, and this particular person who is an actress, she comes over and she's like, Hey, hi, good morning. Hey, hi, good morning. Hey, Divian, what is happening? Oh my God, no. <laughs> right? Yeah. At that oh moment, I realised, Oh, I'm Indian to you. You're different. Ah, I'm, I'm, different. <laughs> I'm different. I'm different. But you see, in highlighting that will disrupt some form of social dynamic, we are going to be seen as being overly sensitive and not being able to take a joke. But we receive that every single yes. day as we grow up. It's a constant pressure that is not represented or evident, say, to the majority as much, I feel. You are absolutely right and I actually agree with you. The question is that you being Chinese in the majority group ought to be more sensitive. When the Chinese are together, sometimes you, you tend not to take note. But for the minority group, it's very obvious when you are in the minority. You put me in the group of a female, my gender identity gets activated, right? <laughs> but when you put me in the group of a half males, half females, 50-50, I don't think about gender. When you are in the majority, you it's need sensitive. to be more sensitive. But in that moment, Devin, yeah. how did that make you feel, actually? Alone. And how did that shape your perception of the other Sorry. people? I've had to deal with it my whole life. For some reason, the fairness of my skin affects it. But in being affected by it or receiving it, because I went to a SAP school, I was the butt of jokes for four years. And especially in secondary school, where you're very harsh with these jokes. They make fun of your family. Uh, they say things like, your family is at the back of a truck I saw last Sunday. You know, that, that kind of thing. It affects you. And you grow to understand. You grow to be a bit hardier. You grow to accept that this is just a normal, normal. thing. But you don't grow to let it go. And that's for me. And we, we all have to be very yeah. aware about yes. what the other communities are facing. For example, if you're organizing an event, you need to start at a certain time. You want to start at 7. The Malay Muslim community will not be there by 7 because they have to pray first <laughs> at 7. Exactly. They will come late. Would you change that event to 8? There's a question of understanding the other community's needs and their requirements. And some of them say, look, I will attend your event. If you have a praying hall, would you as an organizer do that? If we can give and take, I think everybody can join in. The first step is to actually educate people. Now, until you bring this up, I would suspect that actually many Chinese have not thought about that. Oh yes, yeah, 7 o'clock is prayer time. It's I think it is process. important. It's a two-way process. We should be more mindful, consider it towards their own schedule and routine. But at the same time, I don't think any particular community should have expectations that people have to move their things around somebody else. I'm sure there's no such expectation that you must mm. do it, but it would be nice. Yeah. I think there's no expectation, but it's a pleasant surprise if you do it. I think people try very hard. Our situation here in Singapore mm. is pretty good. The question is how can we deepen that kind of engagement, make it even better, sustain it and grow it. I attend a lot of functions where you have like clan associations, completely Chinese, except for I'm the only Malay Muslim there. And they really bent backwards to try and accommodate me. They would order food, either one whole table or just for myself. I have to tell them at some point, even temple dinners, please don't do that, just get fruits for me, that will be fine. The intention is so great, you are my guest, so I do my best to try and accommodate you. Yeah. That process of accommodation, I see being repeated over and over and over again, is something that's really good for Singapore. Yeah. Predominantly, we live in HDB flats, a very uh, compact, very dense living environment. Mm. So people do come into contact with each other. And this is where the spirit of give and take, understanding is extremely important. Yeah. We have to accept that it does create inconveniences. But most of the time, because of that respect, the understanding, there is that acceptance. At the same time, I suppose each ethnic community practicing their own 
culture mm -hmm. or festivals will have to bear that in mind. Like for instance, if you're having a wedding in a white bag, try not to increase the volume too high. <laughs> and if you're burning joss papers, try to make use of the Canister, canisters right? that are provided. That helps to reduce the friction and that helps to increase understanding. Then people look at you and say, hey, you're making an effort. Mm -hmm. And so I appreciate that you are making an effort to reduce the kind of inconvenience to me, so I respect you more. That kind of tolerance is needed and necessary. In my constituency, on one occasion, the Malay wedding was at one of that. Then, just two days before the wedding, a funeral took place. But the wake was at the next block adjoining. So Malay wedding, of course, you have all the noise. Yeah. And then celebration, you have right. the wake, they will have morning. the rites, their mourning. It was a wonderful surprise because the Malay family then went to the Chinese family and said, so sorry, we already applied for this place to have the wedding for a very long time. We can't change it. We understand this is a mourning period for you. And then we are celebrating. I hope you don't mind. The Chinese family told the Malay family, look, we should apologize to you because you are celebrating and we are mourning. Mm. But unfortunately, it's just that we don't have any other place. Yeah. This is a place That's nearest beautiful. our home. That's amazing. I think it's also important to understand that when an ethnic group or a religious group requires you to adapt your little practices, often it is not in order to suit another group's practices. It's about something that is more universal and common, mm -hmm. like noise pollution. Everybody mm -hmm. will be affected by noise yeah. pollution, like the burning of jaw sticks, yeah. that is air pollution. When we begin to see that when your own religious group or ethnic interests are so-called encroached upon, Maybe you should pause and think that actually the reason is not because the other group is being valued more, yeah. but to say that there is a larger issue, and that issue could be a health issue, it could be a community noise issue. That kind of a trust and understanding is quite important. Those people are raising the issues and mm. also have to divorce it from yeah. the ethnic group or the cultural yeah, practice right. and yeah. just look at it as a bigger issue. Oh, but but having said that, sometimes there are really deep-seated differences when it comes to values. And that's why our Singaporean core underlying values, belief in fairness, are critical. When our values disagree and they happen to fall along an ethnic or religious line, I cannot resolve this difference, but it's okay because we are both Singaporean. We believe in fairness. We believe in social harmony. Well, I think David's made an, an excellent point. Uh, and conversely, because this bandwidth of tolerance is entirely a two-way street. So just as much as the majorities need to be aware of some of the sensitivities, minorities the minorities we need as to. well. Talking about including people of different races, let's not forget that there are a lot of non-Singaporeans in Singapore. We need to include them and we need to make them feel more at home because they left their countries to be with us.